We're playing with the new toy. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, I lied to you. Basically, I told you when I showed you my new lathe that I would take you with as I made my first ever uh, pen. And I lied. Um, bottom line is, I could not contain myself. Uh, I was too excited, and I wanted to play with my new toy and try this out. And um, I wasn't really ready to to film, so I went ahead and I made a pen. There you see it. Now, it's not perfect. There's things I would like to do differently and will do differently, but I think it came out pretty good for my first attempt, and I really enjoyed doing it. And so today I am actually taking you with as I make a pen. What I'm doing here is some of the prep work needed. Um, I'm using uh, basically one of the simpler sets that you can use. I'm using what's called a slimline pen kit. That's this little guy right here. And then best of all, I'm using these little pre-cut pre-measured and pre-drilled uh, blanks to make my uh, pen bodies. So uh, I don't have to drill them, I don't have to cut them or anything like that. And this is the ones I'm gonna glue up right now. Uh, these are the ones I'm gonna actually be making today um, because you need to let them kind of dry. So uh, I'm gonna be using this slimline pen kit, these blanks, well, these blanks, and I'm going to show you how to make a pen. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting ready to glue the brass tube centers into the blanks, okay? So when you open up your pen kit, that's these little guys right here, all right? And you're going to take and you're going to either use epoxy or thick cyanoacrylate, and you're going to glue them into the tubes. So today I'm using a little bit of 15 minute epoxy. It says PSI, but it's made from uh, BSI ink. They, they make some great products, a lot of great glues. So I've got equal parts of the, the epoxy and the hardener here. I'm just going to mix this up really good. So anyhow, I glued these last night so they would be thoroughly dry and I could turn them today. Um, but basically this is all going to be the same kind of thing. I just wanted you to see the whole process as I do it. Now, I had a lot of fun doing this. I learned a lot in one pen, and I'm hoping, really, dude? Seriously, what, what's with that? All right, anyhow, back to the story. So, um, I'm going to share this with you, and we're going to make a pen today, and Hopefully this will lead to a whole new adventure for us on the channel here. Okay, so we got that nice and mixed up. And uh, let me pause for a second, and I'm going to adjust the camera so you can actually see what's going on here better. Okay, that's better. Now, these are your pen tubes, and it's important that you check to see if they're different lengths depending on your kit. In this case, the slimline kit, both pen tubes are equal length, and like I said, these blanks are pretty much perfect for these pen tubes, so not a big deal. And what we want to do is we want to get a bunch of glue on here and thoroughly, thoroughly get glue between this and the wood block. Now, I try to make sure I have a lot of glue 
all the way around this bottom edge here, not up by my fingers. Because what's going to happen is I slide this in, it's going to kind of squish up and coat the entire tube. And as I slide it in, I'm going to twist it, twist it, twist it, make sure everything's coated. When I get right to the very end here, I'll then push in the rest of the way and I kind of smear the end off. All right, got a little on my finger. I could just put that to the side. And you need to make sure that the brass tube is flush to the ends. All right, so we take the other one. Nice amount of epoxy. Now, like I said, uh, you can use thick cyanoacrylate or you can use the epoxy. Uh, I got the epoxy with my starter set, so I might as well use it, and then I can always change to CA later. And again, we just put it into the little hole and start twisting, twisting, twisting. Testing right to there, and then push it down the rest of the way, smear off the excess. All right, and there we have it. Okay, so we can go ahead and leave these to dry. And uh, although this is 15 minute, um, that's just for it to set up. This actually takes, uh, let's see here. It can be handled in 45 minutes and it's in full strength in three hours. So uh, I did these last night. They're perfectly dry. And the idea is this is what we're trying to make. It's these little tubes. All right. So now that you've seen the inserts go in, we can go ahead and go out and we'll start making a pen. Okay. So before we can work with these, what we have to do is we have to true up the ends of the blanks to the brass tube. And to do that, we use this special bit. And you see it's got this, this shaft on here, and I don't know if you can see it, it's got a little cutting head here, and then it's got some teeth up here. And what it does is it slides up through the tube. Okay. slides into the tube here like this and so this is cleaning out any excess stuff in the tube and then you push it up against the cutters and it squares up the end of the blank to the brass tube that's inside all right so we're going to do that on all of the ends here and uh then we can move over to the lathe and what i like With the blanks ready, I can mount them onto the lathe with a pen mandrel. You're going to need the bushings to match your pen kit. So anytime you get a different kit, make sure you have the right bushings. Most places will sell the bushings and even the drill bit that you'll need for the kit that you have. So just make sure you have the right setup. Otherwise, you're going to go out to go do some work and you're going to be sadly disappointed. These bushings, not only do they help center the blanks on the mandrel, but they also act as a gauge to show you where to mill for the kit you're making. Slide a bushing onto the mandrel, follow it up by a blank, then another bushing, then the second blank, and then finally the last bushing. Go ahead and thread the brass nut on and tighten it all up. Once tight, we can go ahead and slide the tail stock up and we have it outfitted with a live center. Don't over tighten it as you can damage your pen mandrel. I'm going to round out the blanks with a gouge. I'll put my tool rest in. I'll set it to the height so that the gouge will sit at about the midpoint of the blanks. I'll put it as close to the workpiece as I can, making sure it won't get hung up on anything, because 
that would be a disaster. And once I've got the tool rest set, I'm ready to start cutting. For roughing out small parts like this, I'm going to use a fairly fast speed. So I'll turn the RPMs up to around 2500, and then we can go ahead and start rounding these blanks out. And this just shows you how nice it is to have a variable speed lathe as opposed to a multi-speed lathe. I use my dominant hand to control the handle and therefore the angle of the tool. My off hand is going to hold the end of the tool against the tool rest. That'll make sure it doesn't bounce. It will also control how deep my pass will be and it will control my speed as I move along the workpiece. For initial rounding, take very, very, very light passes. As the blanks start to round out, you can get more and more aggressive, but at the beginning you really need to go very, very easily. Slow and steady wins this race. At 2500 RPM, everything looks round, but you can feel it in the tool, I promise you. You can also, if you're not sure, rest the back of the tool on the spinning piece and see if it jumps, which means you're not quite round yet. As you can see, the blanks are round, but I'm pretty far off of the bushings, so I still have a bunch of work to do. Slimline pens, they're very, very thin, and you're going to have to remove a lot of material from, from the blanks, far more than for, let's say, like a cigar pen. So just be prepared for that.
now that I'm a bit closer, I want the cut to be a little smoother and I want to be a little more cautious. So I'll switch to a skew chisel and I'll use it until I get just a hair short of the bushings. I'm going to keep the look I'm after in mind as I cut. In this case, I just want a simple, round, straight body. The skew chisel is a great tool. With the proper angle, the skew can remove material rather quickly, but it can also be used in a scraping motion so that you can sneak up on stuff and get a really nice smooth piece. I'm just shy of the bushings, so I'm going to switch to sandpaper. I'll turn my lathe speed down to about 500 RPMs, and then I'm going to start with 220 grit paper and work my way up to 400. I'm going to make sure I end up even with my bushings so that I get a great fitting final product. When working with a lathe, eye protection is a must at all times. But for the larger work, I choose not to wear a face mask. I do slip one on though when I'm sanding because this will make a lot of fine dust very, very quickly and my lungs just could not stand up to that. In between the grits, before moving on to the next one, sand by hand lengthwise to remove some of the spiral sanding marks. I promise this will give you a much better final look.
With everything sanded smooth and matching up to the bushings nicely, it's time to apply the finish. I'm going to be using cyanoacrylate or CA glue for this. CA gives a nice, smooth, strong, and surprisingly glossy finish, and it's super popular with pen and wood ring makers. Of course, there's about a million other options, but you can investigate that on your own over time. You'll need some accelerator, and I'll be using a thin CA from BSI. I'm going to clean the pen off real quick, and then using some blue shop paper towels, I'll put just a bit of CA on the towel, and while the blank spins, I'll just rub the CA in very quickly, making sure to keep moving, because I don't want to glue the paper towel to the pen. Don't ask how I know that. Anyhow. I find it gives the best look if you hit it immediately with the accelerator. So don't dwaddle and give it a quick spray. I'm going to repeat this about 10 or 20 times. Look how surprisingly shiny that gets. It really is very cool. Anyhow. Some people like to switch to a medium viscosity CA in the later steps. I personally don't. There are as many ways to apply a CA finish as there are folks making pens, so it really is up to you to find what works best for you and what makes you happy. Once the final coats do go on, I can go ahead and put this baby together and finally get a chance to see how it came out. For assembly, they do make pen vices, but you can also, if you're a ring maker, you can use your Arbor Press if you have one. Um, but in my case, today, I'm actually going to be using my bench vise. I already have wood faces on the vise, so it's not going to mar any of the parts. It should work perfect. Be sure, be absolutely sure to read and follow the assembly instructions that come with the kit because you'd hate to blow it now. If you do screw up here, you're probably not going to be able to fix it. Read your instructions. I'm going to line up and press the tip of the pen in first. Then I'm going to press in the internal mechanism, which is called a transmission. And then I can go ahead and screw in the ink cartridge. Next, 
I'll press on the clip and the end cap on the other part of the pen. Now I can go ahead and put the center ring in and put both halves together to finally have a beautiful handmade wood barreled pen. So there you have it, making a wooden pen on your lathe. This is a lot of fun. The pens come out beautiful. They're going to make great gifts, uh, very easily sellable, especially if you have a little creativity in the woods that you use or the, uh, uh, the resins, uh, whatever you, you choose to do. Uh, creativity, these, these things will go along long way but uh, anyhow I hope you really enjoyed this video and if you did I'll bring you a lot more about turning pens and a lot of the other things you can do with a lathe like that uh, all of which look to be really really fun if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up click subscribe click the little bell and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I read everything, and I will try my best to answer any questions that you might have. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. It's a beautiful day here. I hope you're having a great, amazing day wherever you are with beautiful weather, sun shining, birds singing, and just success at anything that you try today. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Until next time. Be good.